Here we are. Yes. Hobbs and Boz on another episode of DePazCast with a twist. This is a little <laughs> different. We're going to take a break from our regularly scheduled programming, although there's only been one episode. And we are going to talk about movies. I mean, Boz, we talk about sports, movies, TV shows. That's essentially what we got. But yep. this is a pod dedicated to our Hall of Fame movies, and it will be titled The Poskers. How about Poskers. that? Oscars, P P O Z C A R S, obviously a play on the Oscars. Yes, yes, exactly. First, Boz, uh, a little. Where, where are you? Uh, you well, different that, location. Well, a big point of contention of our last our last podcast was my lighting and my sound, and I don't know if the sounds any better. I've got. To, I'm going to step up the game. Um, I'm going to make sure I get some audio equipment in there. But so we've been trying to find a time to do this, and there's no perfect time. Got jobs, got job families. We got this. I'm in Cookville, Tennessee. Uh, little known, little known part of Eastern Tennessee, uh, uh, a university called Tennessee Tech is here. Good buddy of mine coaches them. So we're on a family trip. Saw a Predators game last night in Nashville, which was awesome. NHL. This is the most we'll talk about the NHL. The NHL live is unreal. It's unbelievable how good it is. But anyway, so then we made it, went over to Cookville and I couldn't, the kids are upstairs watching a movie, uh, conference room booked. I don't know who's having a conference in Cookville. So we're in the gym. Um, <laughs> notice nobody's getting after it. Um, got good Wi-Fi. I don't think anybody's going to come in. My brother and I had a little bit of a, a, you know, a productive, we had a argument on if someone comes in, what do we do? I say if someone comes in, we just keep the podcast going. If they don't like it, that's fine. They'll probably listen to it. Maybe we'll get another listener. But I think if somebody comes in to get a little 5K in, it'll be good for the show. That's where I'm it at. Will. It will be good. All right. Cookville, Tennessee. All right, so our first Hall of Fame movie, Boz kind of teed it up a little bit. Look, it's Rocky, right? I mean, nothing combines sports, pop culture, quite like the classic movie of Rocky. Um, but what's a Hall of Fame movie? Boz, maybe give the, the listeners, like, what? how do you get in the Hall of Fame, our Hall of Fame? Well, I think it's, so what it's not is, my brother and I don't know what cinematography is. I don't know what a what a what a key grip is. I don't know. It has nothing to do with the writing. The it has nothing to do with it. It's just a guy's guy's movie that when you watch it, you're just excited to see it and it's unbelievably rewatchable. You recite the lines. Everybody knows that it's got to have a great character. It's got to stand the test of time. And when you mention the movie, every single guy says, "Yep. Yep. That's a great one." Now, as this po as the podcast, we got to go three years before we get an outside listener. So I don't know how many movies we're going to get to until someone hears it. But it's kind of like a baseball player, a football player. When you hear the name, you know right away if they're in the Hall of Fame or not. That's a yeah. Hall of Fame movie. Exactly. Well said. I mean, look, there's a lot of good movies we've seen over time, but they don't hold up. They don't. You don't rewatch them. I mean, Hurt Locker. We both liked it. Watched it, good. When's the last time you thought about it? I mean, Never yeah, it gave us Jeremy Renner, but we don't really think about it. Well, did Mark, didn't you like it? Didn't you not like it because a woman directed it? Wasn't that your big beef with it? No, I, I <laughs> look. I live with women. <laughs> Love them. It's great. Good point, Catherine Bigelow. Uh, so look, I don't know. Look, I think this is the greatest sports movie of all time. But if you don't agree with that, it at least gave birth to the modern sports movie. This thing's been redone a thousand times, Rocky on a football field, Rocky on a baseball field, Rocky on a hockey rink. I mean, this is the classic underdog story. I mean, what, look, this movie came out before you were born, Boz. Correct. We've probably seen this movie together probably more than, than anything. I don't remember when I first saw it. I know we had the VHS of it. We used to watch it. We used to reenact the fight, if you remember that in the family room. We didn't have boxing gloves. We had those plastic gloves that you would use to, to wash the dishes with. Dishwashing gloves. Turns. Dishwashing gloves. We'd take yeah. turns. One day I'm Creed, next day you're Creed. And, yeah. uh, you know, we worked the body. We, you know, we, we went to it. We did great. But what what's what do you remember about seeing this movie for the first time? Not much. Not much. I mean, I, I'm trying to figure out when the first time. And this, this won't be a reoccurring thing because most of our classic movies um, are, are, are newer, quote unquote. We're getting old, Mark. But so newer isn't that new anymore, but no, I have no clue the first time I saw this, this movie, just because to your point, you know, dad was showing it to me, you were showing it to me before I can even remember. Um, so th this is going to be a rare one. I will say this, 
obviously in preparation for this, I rewatched it again. Mark, when was the last time you watched this movie start with the picture of Jesus, the painting of Jesus on that old gym to finish with Rocky and Adrian in the ring? Well, so it's a, it's a great point. When I say I've watched this movie the most, I think I've watched parts of this movie more than any other movie, particularly the fight, him running, jumping up and down on the steps, uh, him hitting the hanging beef. But you're right, from start to finish, not a ton. It had probably been a little while until this week when I when I rewatched it. But just parts of this movie, I'm watching at least once a month, I think. You? Yeah, probably. Do you remember the first time you saw it? Well, you were only, what, you were four years old? Four years old? Yeah, I didn't see it. Yeah. Four, 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 yeah, I didn't see, obviously, I didn't see it in the theater. I remember seeing it. I was probably, you know, eight or nine years old, something like that, you know, on, on a VHS. Look, our dad didn't watch a ton of movies. He loved Rocky. Yeah. So he, love, he introduced love us. Rocky. He introduced this was us. To, your, to your point of, I, I, of, you know, of icons, this was the first movie hero of my life. This was the first hero, um, even before Luke Skywalker, which is kind of around the same time, um, Rocky was the first iconic sports not not sports iconic movie character you know he wasn't before walter payton he wasn't before jim mcmahon but he was he was the first movie icon that i adored for sure speaking of iconic movie characters we touched on this on the first podcast it was the most iconic movie character of all time we painstakingly went through it and it's and not even whole, up, and it's not even up for debate not, it's not, not, up for, for, not up for debate Couple facts and figures here for you, Buzz. This movie is released November twenty first, nineteen seventy six. A one million dollar budget grows two hundred and twenty five million. Now I didn't go very far in school, but that is a pretty good return on investment. You mentioned nineteen. You mentioned Star Wars in nineteen seventy six. This is the highest grossing movie of the year. It was released at the end of November. Pretty good feat. The year, the next year, nineteen seventy seven. It's the second highest grossing movie behind Star Wars. Yeah. I mean, think think about that uh, for staying power. Ten Academy Award nominations. I mean, they did the Academy Awards back better back in the day. A movie like this would never get nominated now. Three wins, most notably Best Picture. What are your thoughts on that? It's it's literally unbelievable. I cannot believe. To your point, a movie like this will never win an Oscar again. Um, and I think it's just it's got we. In this day and age, I don't know who said this first, but I use this this quote all the time. Uh, we don't lack information. We lack wisdom. We've got all the information. So I think when we're looking at, at gathering data for the Oscars of these movies, they're talking too much about, to my point, cinema, cinematography and screenwriting and this, rather than, well, get your ass in that movie and it just is like, you're just so excited to see this movie. That it, It's too much. It's too artsy nowadays. And I... I like the artsiness, but you'll see we're going to reveal our top 11 movies and it, it, none of it has to do with directing, although the directing is awesome. I won't be able to tell what's better directing this movie or that movie. It's just a great, great movie. So it was surprising to be reminded again and it was the best picture. Yeah, hard to believe. I mean, look, you know, famously, it's not just an underdog story about Rocky. It's an underdog story about Sylvester Stallone. I mean, famously, he... He sees Chuck Wepner fight Muhammad Ali. He writes the script, starts shopping it around. Look, he's a struggling actor. He starts shopping it around Hollywood. Everybody, and keep in mind, at this time, there was no Rocky. Right? Like, if he did this today, people would be like, whatever, get out of here. I've seen this movie 8,000 times. But in 1976, it was a new concept. All these producers wanted it. They didn't want him. They wanted Robert Redford. They wanted Burt Reynolds. They wanted all these other guys. But the guy, the ultimate bet on yourself he said, no, I'm going to be the guy that stars in it. Now, he's he's broke, right? He's offered $150,000, a lot of money at that time, even more money, especially a guy living on the street, more or less. He holds his cards, and look, he becomes a legend, right? You cannot look at Sylvester Stallone without seeing Rocky. He he's also right. got another iconic character that will be on an upcoming Oscars. I think you know what we're talking about, one John J. Rambo. He'll, oh, yeah. be, he'll, be, he'll be a part of that, but it's the ultimate bet on yourself underdog story. Another part of this thing that makes it great is Gonna Fly Now. I mean, is that the most iconic song ever from a movie? It actually reached number one on the Billboard chart. I mean, think about think think about that. 
The other thing that helped too is Ali is the heavyweight champion. Is the heavyweight champion at this time in real life in 1975, 76. Um, uh, Joe Frazier, who's actually in this movie, he beat Frazier oh, yeah. in '75. So upcoming, imagine, upcoming category. Yeah, imagine you know, imagine Muhammad Ali is the heavyweight. We'll talk about this on scenes, but like, who is that now? I guess that would be in a boxing movie that makes a you know a cameo. It'd be Conor McGregor. It probably wouldn't even be a boxer. So. To have Ali, the number one boxer in the world, obviously helped the popularity of this movie, I would imagine, at that time. Yeah, boxing was obviously as popular as it could possibly be uh, back then. One, one, one final thing on this. I mean, probably what goes down as the greatest upset in the history of boxing is, is Buster Douglas over Tyson. Now, Tyson went off as a 42-1 to favorite on that, on that fateful night. What would this have been, boss? Creed comes into this fight 46 and 0 with 46 knockouts. 46 and 0, 46 knockouts. Rocky enters the fight 44 and 20 with 39 knockouts. He's got some he's got some punching power, but the guy went down 20 times. What would the odds? They didn't it's not in the movie. What would the odds have been? Well, so are are we gonna get into that because this goes into part of talking about the movie of how does the Italian stallion <laughs> Get in the ring, <laughs> the greatest boxer in the world. Um, I, I would say Rocky would be, he would be fifty to one. Fifty to one on it, right? I mean, it's got to be something dramatic, right? I mean, no one had ever even heard. Of, we'd at least heard of Buster Douglas. He had to do something to get to that let's, fight. Let's, let's be clear, Mark. Let's be clear, Mark. <laughs> I don't know if this fight could get booked nowadays. <laughs> To, for for those who haven't seen the movie, um, uh, the the number one contender for Apollo Creed. It's the bicentennial of the country. It's 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 the biggest fight. It's going to happen on you know. But, uh, another unanswerable question is Rocky, a Christmas movie. Uh, you, you, if, they, if if Die Hard's a Christmas movie, this is a Christmas movie. But here, so the backstory is the number one contender breaks his hand. Um, and so he says, so Creed says, give me someone, um, who kind of exemplifies America, hardworking underdog shot. And he hears about this guy called the Italian stallion who is from Philly. Uh, so that's how he gets a shot. I don't think that happens nowadays, <laughs> but anyway, made for a good movie. <laughs> Speaking of Italian stallion, did you hear the line in there? Where I, you know, you think there's some great origin story to the I, name. He just he says made it up eight years ago. <laughs> eight years ago. Made it up We're about eight years ago. That. We'll get into that. There's so much unintentional comedy in this movie. It's just, it's just so good. So, you know, why is it in the Hall of Fame? It's the underdog story. It it's it creates sports movies, which we love. Bet on I your would say it, it's arguably it's arguably, arguably, it's not my top movie, it's not your top movie ever, but it's arguably the best movie of all time. And there's going to be a lot of this recency bias. But after I got done watching it, my last note is it's the best movie of all time. And and I had to bring myself off. I mean, it still might be. You catch me on a day. It's it's just an absolutely incredible movie. It's an incredible movie. It it, it really is. So look, it, and back, we compiled a list of about 125 of our greatest movies. We centered on 50 that we're going to induct into the Hall of Fame. But we specifically ranked the top, we wanted to do the top 10, but there was a, a disagreement about one. So we put it in the top 11. Where do you have this movie ranked on your, your top 11? So let, uh, let's like, yeah, let's not give a lot of it away here. You know, uh, just, the, I, just the number. Yeah. But I've got it three. I've got Rocky is the third greatest movie of all time. Okay. You? I, well, I had a, we had a pre-production meeting and you made a good point. I am going to pivot at the last second it was four it's now three so we're going to agree that yeah. rocky is the third our third best movie uh, of all time all right so since everybody's new to the poscars we're, we're going to go through some categories i don't know if we'll choose a winner for each one of them but just to kind of reminisce and talk about the about the movie the first one is the best scene boz what are your nominees for the best scene in this movie well do i mean i guess do we want to do this is what I think is the best scene or go chronologically through the movie. However you want to do it. But then tell me what you think is. The, oh yeah. Give me, give me, give me your best scenes. 
Well, I just, I, it's, 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 it's round 14. It's, it's when, it's just when both of them are done. Um, Rocky gets knocked down. Apollo thinks it's finally over. Um, and Rocky oh, stands up. He's just he can't on. believe it. Yep. And Rocky gives him the this. You know, he, well, for those who can't see, he gives him the come on. Um, that as I as I talk about it now, it's got goosebumps. I, there's no chance there's a scene that's better than that. Um, but I, so I'll start with that. That is my best scene. We'll we'll talk about others. But what would you what would you say? So the only the look and I love the that's the one we would reenact in the living room is Rocky getting knocked down. Mickey's yelling at him to stay down. Apollo's got the arms up. He walks away. He's finally vanquished him. Rocky gets up. It's just like come come get some. The announcer was a Stu Nahum. Apollo can't believe it. I mean, it's just you're. I'm getting goosebumps right now thinking about it. The only, the only but, one that is in the is in the hunt here. It's look him climbing those steps at the end of that training montage is one of the most iconic moments of any movie ever. If you're ever is. done it, I've run up the steps. It's kind of underwhelming. I don't want to step on another category, but that whole gonna fly now, and him climbing the steps where he fails earlier in the movie is probably the only one that that can compare. What are, what are your thoughts on the training montage? Yeah, well, all these training, you know, the, the argument will come when we do sequels is, you know, what's the best training montage? Um, I don't think it's the best um, just because Rocky changes, right? That's the biggest thing I took about watching this, watching this movie away or watching this movie again is by Rocky three, Rocky becomes a character of himself. He's a cartoon character, basically, not in a bad way. He's just, but the beginning of Rocky, this first hour of the movie, and I'm, I told you I wasn't going to get artsy, but this is a little artsy. You just forget who he was, how he developed. He wasn't as corny as I remember. I remember him being really, really corny, the whole accent and the him being dumb. But Rocky Balboa, the person Rocky Balboa, might be the greatest human that ever lived. Meaning he is so kind hearted. He is, he looks for the best. He's sent to go break a guy's thumbs. He doesn't, oh. right? He doesn't, he doesn't do it. He, you know, he, he talks, he humors Polly, who is, you know, the worst human on the planet. Um, who does he seek out for the, you know, for his love, the, the shy person that gets called retarded by his own bro by her own brother. Yeah. Um, he, he is only mean to one person and he's mean to Mick, which the scene I forgot, I forgot Mick wasn't as virtuous as you remember. Mick was on the hunt for some money and Mick wanted to be his trainer and Rocky in a great acting performance blows up on Mick. That's mm -hmm. a great, great scene. And I hate to be artsy and Mick walks out and it doesn't let, you know, by the time Mick walks down the stoop and five steps down, what does Rocky do? Rocky I'm runs out there, puts his arm around him. He is a great, great human. I, it was just, I was blown away. I, I yeah. totally forgot about that. You just think of Rocky as a boxer, but it was great. No, no I agree. I've got some thoughts on Mick uh, late, later on in the program here. Yeah, well, I, I, I totally I agree. I, know, I think I know a category. You know exactly it. where I'm going. So look, it, it, you're right that he kind of became a car. It kind of reminds me of Al Pacino in a little way. Like prior to Scent of a Woman, Pacino's, I, I love him in movies. But the hoo-ha thing, like that's just Pacino in every movie now. He kind of, he's like a, he's almost like a, a clown version of himself. So I agree with you on the Rocky. The only other scenes that I really like in the movie, for whatever reason, when he goes on the first date and they're skating around, he's just. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yelling at that guy up in it's the amazing. thing. It's hilarious. Adrian, he's yelling. Like that, what's great about the end of this movie, one, he doesn't win. But you almost kind of don't even know it. It's kind of happening in the background. He just wants his girl. He doesn't yeah. care about anything. He's just look. He's yelling. It's kind of it's really cool when he does that. I agree with you. The knockdown at the end of round fourteen, and also hitting the beef, hitting that frozen beef, and is a really a kind of a cool scene. But well, I agree with you. The one scene I'm going to always watch is that knockdown at the end of the penultimate round before we get to round fifteen. I, I think it's the best scene in the movie. When 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 Creed throws that right. And there's that pause, oh. that little pause, and he gets them, which leads into all of, I mean, right before round 14, all of our, the, this is a movie better for quotes than it is for scenes. I mean, some of these quotes will, I've said, I've, I've said them today already.
uh, some of these quotes. So uh, they're good. For, for sure. And let's look the next. All right. So we got the best look, quotes. This movie is a quote machine. I mean, you've got Yo Adrian. I mean, that people just say that. How about Eat Lightning and Crap Thunder? I mean, oh, this yeah. is a pretty good, pretty good one there. You know, uh, I love when he's just like, look, I just want to go the distance with Creed. And if I can do that, I won't, I'll know I'm just not another bum from the neighborhood. Well, hold I'll, on. Let's pause. Let's pause there for a second. Let's pause me, there. Cut me, that, Mick. That's the one. No, it's. Hey, what do you get? The best. I can't see nothing. Got to open my eye. Cut me, Mick. Cut me. I mean, we've I said mean, that to each other a thousand times. Uh, here's another one we've said a thousand times. Uh, he's spitting up blood now. I mean, that's, <laughs> it's an, but, but I tell you what, the, the w women weaken legs by Mick. <laughs> Women, women with legs. Legs. how about uh at the, when the rice to you it's thanksgiving to me it's thursday i mean that's, that's, right. that's right women that's... weak legs um here's another one um he said he's walking out to he's walking out to the fight and mick asked him about ask him about the the robe you know i thought i was training a a fighter not a billboard What'd you get for that? He says, I got the robe. Paulie got three grand. And Mickey goes, shrewd. <laughs> oh, it's, it's just, it's just classic. Oh, here's, a, here's another one that we've said to each other a million times. You got to quit. You got to, you got to quit shucking and jiving. You got to stick and move. move. I mean, that's. You got to stick are, and move. What about ain't going to be no rematch? Don't want one. Yeah. You I ain't mean, stop. You ain't stopping nothing. You, you ain't stop, 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 stop kill you. I'll kill you. Yeah, stop I mean, just there's too many. I mean, is is it is it Yo Adrian or is it Cut Me Mick? What what is what do you think well, is no, the because best? it's it's not because this isn't the Yo Adrian that everybody quotes. Yo Adrian, right. I did it is Rocky II. So he is saying Yo Adrian, but it's yeah. it's different this time. My beef with the Adrian at the end. So I mean, this I know we're not doing this as a as Don't a step on Adrian. Yet. There'll be a lot of Adrian. No, talk. I'm not. No, 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 I'm not because you already mentioned it about his quote about if I could just go the distance, it's a good lesson for you kids. Like it's it. Where did he set his goal? He set his goal to just finish the fight and he did it. He did it. What if he got a little bit bigger Then it would have, little, would, would, would have been a little bit different. So he did. So yeah, look, just, it's, it's a quote machine, uh, a lot of, a lot of humor in it, which, which you don't, which you don't think it. Stallone wrote it. I mean, Incred incredible writing. All right. What, well, so what, along with along with the quotes. So if Stallone wrote it, so I I said this to you. Paulie, Paulie is is just one quote machine. Oh, he's not quote as machine. iconic. No. But when but when Rocky comes over on Thanksgiving and basically Paulie throws that burn because it's Thanksgiving, Paulie said uh, Adrian does not want to go out with Rocky. Paulie said, and I had to I I had to write it down because I never remember hearing this. I, Paulie says to Adrian, I want you out of here instamatically. I'm sick of watching you hanging around like a spider. <laughs> uh, uh, I, don't, I don't remember that one, but I was, that uh, made me laugh. Really that made me laugh a lot. Yeah. Pa Paulie's a machine. All right. One of my favorite, two, it's a kind of a two part category. What holds up? It's kind of one of the reasons we, we put movies in our Hall of Fame, right, Boz? Is like we can still talk about it, right? Like, and there's a lot of cool things about what what holds up about this movie. I mean, an underdog story always works, right? We love the underdog. I, I think we like that. The music, I defy you to be running or in the gym and gonna fly it. Now it comes on, and you don't you don't speed up or, or you or you don't try try harder. We talked about this as well. He doesn't win the fight. Think think of the guts of that. You know, look, every one of these movies that comes out now, they always win in the end, right? They overcome the odds. And I don't know how long or how many times I had seen the movie to realize he didn't win. It's like it's chaotic at the end. He's yelling for Adrian. You see Creed at some point jump up and down. I don't know that I ever really paid attention to it, but it's unbelievable that they went with that ending right now. It, it, it plays into the sequels, which we'll talk about here in a second. But those are some of the things that really hold up. I think that was probably the coolest thing is that he doesn't win the fight. Yeah. And he's got something that not to get on my soapbox here that no, that nobody has anymore. This will get into some of our discussions of best movies of 23 and, and looking forward to. He's got humility, right? There's the, the humility is lacking nowadays, um, but he's just a, a character 
that you can truly, truly root for. Um, yes. the, our childhood was, was littered with, with movies and think of the kids movies, mighty ducks, little giants, the mean green, like these underdog stories where you're just rooting for the, for the, for the ugly duckling to succeed. And I just don't know why they don't make movies like this anymore. I still think they'd be good. I still think they'd make a lot of money. A hundred percent. What else, what else holds up? We've got the Italian stallion. I mean, is that the greatest sports nickname of all time? It the is. term Southpaw. I mean, I had no idea what a Southpaw, you, you literally get a lesson into what a Southpaw right. is. How about rock running around in the Chuck Taylors, Boz? Is it, Chuck is Taylors? Nice, that, holds, nice. that holds up. Are we sure that's the right story? I didn't research that. Are we sure <laughs> Rock's telling the truth about a Southpaw because his his arm was, if you're in Philly, his arm was towards Jersey? I, <laughs> I, I don't know if that's that's correct. We'll, we'll leave that to the fact checkers. But look, Rocky yeah. said it. I, I think we're going with it. And, you know, maybe we do it. It launches an unbelievable franchise and it launches Stallone into superstardom. He becomes an A-lister. He's like an action hero of our so many great Stallone movies in the yeah. in the 80s and early 90s. But the franchise and the sequels we could talk about. We could talk about now. You want to do that? We, yeah, we will. But one th one more thing that holds up is is the ugly girl turning into a hot girl because, <laughs> you know, well, takes her glasses off. She's immediately hot, which, you know, I've, I've, I've got a lot of trouble with, with Adrian. So it's hard to say that she was hot, but by when she's got that red beret on at the end of the movie, she's hot, but did, when she's in the pet store, she's not, you know, so did this I, movie invent that bot. Did this movie invent the glass? I mean, we might have to look that up. Was this the first have, movie where the glasses have, come off and the girl gets hot? Well, the fact that we didn't fact check the Southpaw, we could just say that, yes, this oh, movie invented the ugly girl that takes off her glasses and then is immediately hot. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. So we're going to talk about the seat. Look, initially when we were doing this, Boz was like, look, you got to put them all in. And we talk about them. Like, it's way too much material. Rocky's the classic of this whole deal. But it launches Rocky's two, three, four. We do not acknowledge Rocky five in this in, in this family. Didn't happen. Balboa was a nice comeback. It's pretty good. It's got a great scene with him talking to his son, a great motivational speech that you hear about it. I'm even a fan of Creed 1 and 2. Creed 3, not acknowledged. They cut Stallone out of that, you know, for litigation reasons, things like that. I'll, like, Rocky 2 is an abomination for an hour of it. Now, from the moment she says, when she wakes up from the, the coma and says, win, from that moment to the end might be the best Rocky has ever been. The fight is unbelievable. He's it's just they both get knocked down. He gets it's he beats the bell. That training thing is incredible, but it is a snooze fest up until she gets out of the coma. We mentioned Balboa. It, OK, it's fine. We're not really going to get into this comes down to three and four. Right. This basically comes down to what is the best sequel? Uh, I've got my thoughts. Where do you go on the sequels, boss? Well, it's it's you're you're either you're either a you're either a one three four two guy or you're a one four three two guy. That's just every adult male fits into one of those categories. And I'm by I mean maybe somebody could if somebody says something's better than one. I don't. Yeah, I, it almost it's almost it's almost disrespectful. You've got to put one one. I think, um, but I'm a one four three. I just don't Drago. It's a little bit more commercial. He is the cartoon character of Rocky Balboa at this point. I mean, it's just, but, but it's like, it's like showing up to somebody's house and they're going to feed me, you know, fried chicken, mashed potatoes. It's just, it's just easy. Four yeah. is just easy. They didn't put any thought into it. They said, what is a man with testosterone going to like? And that's what they fed us. And it's just awesome. It, um, it's so all I'm, montages. I think it's 35, 40 minutes of training montages, um, the fight. Like, yeah, I agree with you. I'm a one, four, three, two guy. Three is a little dark to me. Clubber Lang is kind of cartoonish. The Mickey dying is, is tough. Like, I know Apollo dies in four, but Rocky kind of uses it as fuel. The training sequences are unbelievable. The f and let's not forget, Rocky ends the Cold War. He single-handedly goes into Russia, beats Drago. If I can change... And you can change. We all can change. And you can change. 
we, he unites the two the two superpowers. So I, and, I'm, I'm and, a, and Gorbachev yeah. Gorbachev agrees. He says it. Gorbachev's you know he's like yeah yeah, yeah. you know this he, guy's this guy's right. Finally Drago and he and he releases Drago from the chains of the communists. Yeah. Uh, yasi bia, yasi bia. You know he's just <laughs> one of the great quotes. One of the great quotes of all yeah, time. So, you, so that's that, that's. that's is, do you, I think you said this is the best. Does four have the best training montage? I think four is the best training montage. When he bearded when he Rocky, talks. bearded Rocky is come on, <laughs> come on. I mean, it's which, he's, which one when he's on the mountain yelling Drago that would that that we culminates where he climbs the mountain by himself. There's no easy. There's no easy way out. Isn't that what it is? There's no shortcut home. It might or be hearts that, on fire. Uh, I don't, hearts, I don't, hearts on fire. There's no easy way out. Is three while he's driving the sports yeah, car. Yeah, right? uh, yeah. That's the montage of all the, all the stuff. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm a one. I'm a one four three two guy. Um, but this will be a, a future Posker um, um, topic. But it it might be the best sequels of all. It might be the best. It might be the best movie of all time if you include all the sequels. It's really good. All right. Unfortunately, there are some things that just do not hold up. Uh, over time, I, I, I've got I've got some of them eating the raw drinking the raw eggs. I, I hate to admit a lot of guys our age did this. I did it. You can't describe the disgustingness of eating, drinking raw eggs. I, I can't get that smell out of my mouth. So uh, what, out of my so mind. Let's talk about that. But it's not only eating the raw eggs. I make my kids like eggs, but they like them. Sun I'm not an egg guy. So Things you'll learn about me during the Posker and the podcast. I've never worn deodorant my entire life. My, I don't produce body odor. That's one thing. Um, I've never eaten a corn dog. Uh, just not, at 46 years old, I'm just never going to do it. It's kind of my thing. I've never done it. I don't eat eggs. I just started drinking coffee. Like there's a lot of weird things, not weird things, but my kids like eggs. So I don't even know what's called, but sunny side up where you've got the yolk that stays intact, right? Correct. Well, so you've got, you've got. In, in scrambled eggs, you can just throw it in there, pick out the shells. The way he smashes this egg on the glass, <laughs> there's no chance that the full, the cup is filled with entire chips of the shell. No. There's no, he, there's no care taken at all. I get he's more of a man than I am. Um, but in that same website where you said Southpaw was right, are we... Are we getting all the nutritional value by slurping down raw eggs? I mean, is it just the easiest way to do it? I assume it was a ton of protein. That's why I was doing it. I can just tell you it's vile, you know, and I'm sure that watching that movie subjected a lot of guys my age, like, all right, I'm going to be, I'm going to slurp these down and go run five miles. It's, it's hideous. That just, look, that, that doesn't hold up. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. How much different is a egg raw than eating an oyster with an oyster, no saltine, yeah. no Tabasco, no nothing. An oyster is delightful. Not even you can't even compare the two. It's it's delightful. That's awful. Look, we'll we'll get you some deodorant and an oyster. We'll we'll, we'll have a night of it. I got no use for either one of them. None you, of them. Here's here's another one, Boz. <laughs> There's a lot of empty seats in that fight when you're watching it. Now look, when they filmed it, they probably didn't think we'd be watching this movie in 50 years. They didn't realize we'd have HD TVs, but when you watch that fight, as many times I have, and the camera spinning around, there's nobody in the arena. So a little bit of and, editing and work there. No, and well, it's the same editor that had punches missing by 18 inches. <laughs> I I don't know. First of all, this ruined heavyweight. This ruined boxing for me forever because most of us saw this be before we saw a real fight. Right? I don't remember watching a real fight till Tyson. I, I don't, I mean, I don't remember. Yeah. So I thought every fight, I thought every fighter fought with his hands by his hips <laughs> and just took jabs in the face as a form of defense. <laughs> I, I don't know what, you know, it looked fine to me, but boy, I don't know if it's HD. I mean, HD could be the culprit. I For mean, these punches are missing by absolute miles. And if we're going to talk about what has, what doesn't hold up, um, if baby it's cold outside has now been canceled due to its, you know, suggestive nature. I mean, that apartment scene with rock and Adrian is terrible to watch. I mean, it is, and I'm, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're not going to get it, you know, in hopes that this podcast hits, we're going to stay in the, we're not going to, we're not going to get into political comments. 
we're not going to share our, our voices on this, but it was, I mean, Rocky was, he was bad. <laughs> now Adrian wanted to stay and get kissed, but wow, he was bad. Look, let's, let's not disparage our hero. Things happened. It was the seventies. Uh, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not going to hold them to it, but I had that down real fights and ruined real fights for the watching a boxing fight. Other than Tyson is largely just a snooze fest, right? Snooze That's fest. Why, yeah, there's no, nothing happens. Um, what else doesn't hold up? I've got, look, I think hitting the beef was one of the more iconic scenes, but Rocky's hands are bloody. He's wearing wraps that clearly haven't been washed in a hundred years. He's pounding this beef. And did the people of Philadelphia get subjected to mad cow disease? I mean, there didn't seem to be a whole lot of standards there. There's all sorts of people in this place where the beef is going, but do they take the beef and throw it out? Or did that just become a T-bone that uh, Mickey might eat later? I mean, what do you it was the seventies. I mean, I don't, you know, there was, this was before COVID. I mean, imagine after COVID what this would be, would this would be filmed. So no, but I think there's a reason we don't, we've never seen another pro boxer train in a freezer hitting beef. I don't, I'm not positive. It's the best way to go. I don't know. I'm not a boxer, but I, I don't know. Here's, here's another question I've got for you. So these boxing gyms, <laughs> <laughs> one, did they ever exist like this where you would take a wrong, like a guy like me and you, you know, who wouldn't last a day, you know, minute in prison or in a ring, like make a wrong turn, go in a door in Philly, and there's just guys just like boxes. Just, just getting just, just getting after it. Just hitting bags, you know, doing the speed bags, there's spit and sweat. One, did those ever exist? Two, do they exist now? And three, how much would I need to pay you to go and walk in and just be like, hey, I'm here to train? What would be your number? It, you don't have enough. I'm not, I'm not doing that. They probably exist. Look, on the way to the golf course or find, finding sushi, we're, we're probably not passing it. Uh, yeah, we're, I wouldn't last very long. You don't have enough money to get, to get, me, to, get me to walk into those. It's, it's, a, it's a great point, though. Um, here's a couple others, Bob, for what doesn't hold up. Clearly, based on the Creed sequels, Apollo's out running around. You know, he, he's how many other illegitimate children did he have out there? But we know of at least one that makes it Adonis Creed. How about this? And I will save Adrian for last. Chuck Wepner. You know, this by all accounts, this is based on Chuck Wepner fighting Muhammad Ali. No one knows who Chuck Wepner is. Everyone knows who Rocky is. This is like some guy named George writing a, writing a movie about himself walking out at Notre Dame and he gets carried off the field. Great story, but then we come to find out Rudy Ruger's an actual human being that we never hear about. I kind of feel bad for, for, for old man Chuck Wepner. Never really got his due. Never got his, never got his due, but you know what? The world's filled with guys who never got their due, Mark. I haven't put any thought into Chuck Wepner. You went, <laughs> you went deep there on that. Now, I, I care about one underdog boxer fighting a champion, and it's Rocky Balboa. That's the only guy I care about. Oh, Let's yeah. do Adrian. All right. Now, look, she, she might be the worst. Rocky won. She's fine. In the sequels, I mean, is there a worse character? Just an absolute wet blanket, constantly telling him that he can't do this and he can't do that. She's, she's tolerable in this movie. I, I don't mind her. I've actually kind of liked her in this film. As you said, she kind of goes through the transformation. But how do you feel about Adrian? Well, other than giving, so, so as a dog owner, we're all dog owners there. What one thing you can't give butt kiss to a guy who's got a 400 square foot apartment. I mean, butt kiss is guy didn't have a, a bad life. I don't know what he's being fed. I don't know that hundred and, you know, what did he get? 150 grand for this fight, I guess with inflation, that's enough where butt kiss can be taken care of, but bad move on her. Um, but no, she's, She's what you call a crab. So a crab is, you know, a bucket. If you've got seven crabs or eight crabs, you don't need a big bucket. You just need a bucket that's just about, you know, six or seven inches tall because when one is trying to get up out of the bucket, the others just grab them down. She's a crab. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what she is. She's She proves herself to be the worst movie wife of all time. Not even close. Like, there. tell me another one. Um, yeah. Gold medal. She, Gold medal she, worst wife. Gold medal, worst wife, just cannot get in, can't buy into a dream. 
find the worst in everything still in in rocky three and four she's in these huge mansions still just loves telling rock how how he has no shot but then when rocky does climb the mountain and is the champion who's the first one there just <laughs> I mean, she is just the worst the absolute crap. worst a crap, crap. she's term. a crap you've heard that term before yeah, she's All a right. This next category is a fun one. This is the best scene stealer. What I want everyone to think about is I think the ultimate scene steal of a movie is probably McConaughey in, in Wolf of Wall Street, right? I mean, he's in the thing for three minutes. You can't forget it, right? So in order to be the scenes, you got to be in a minimal, minimal part of the movie. That's why initially you might think Paulie's a scene stealer, but he's in too much of it. He's in all the sequels. Heck, he's on. He's like the fourth or fifth main character in the whole thing. So I've got some, I've got some nominees for scene ceiling. You mentioned one. We're going to go the animal route first. What about Cuff and Link? His two turtles. I mean, great names, Cuff and Link. You got Butkus. His does a famous story about it. It was actually Rocky's dog. Boz, did you know that? He has to sell, he has to sell the big bull massive because he's got no money. Then when he gets the money, when he licenses the, you know, they're going to make the movie, he goes and buys the, Butkus back and puts him in the film. Butkus, just a, a terrific job. Um, the hanging beef, pretty pretty good scene stealing uh, bit there. But let's get into let's get into some people. Spider Rico, the first fight. I mean, that's Rocky's one and only win in the movie. I mean, Spider Rico is pretty good. Well, uh, it's, Frank, it's the oh. best. It, it's the best because he keeps telling people about Spider Rico. I mean, he's always he's. <laughs> Hey, how'd you do? How'd you be, be Spider Rico? He was a good fight. Yeah, he's yeah. Spider Rico is good. Yeah, he's good. I mean, imagine you're going by the bingo hall and it says Spider Rico versus the Italian Stallion. I mean, you might throw down a couple bucks. I'm stopping to go to, go, to stopping. go check that out. You mentioned this, Bob. Philadelphia's favorite son, the Smoking Joe, the beloved Mr. Joe Frazier, is in the movie. I mean, that that's a pretty great. good one. It looks great. You know, looks, these box, the old time boxers. I mean, we think of Muhammad Ali and Joe Frey and all these guys, all the other George. Yeah, he looked great. He looked great. And yeah. so he lost to Ali in October of 75. So when was this filmed? When was this filmed? Oh, well, it was, that's a good, it was released on November of uh, 76, probably filmed in 75. You, so you're thinking, was he the champ when they're doing this filming and he loses? No, no, he wasn't. No, no. My, uh, Ali beat him when Ali was the champ. So it was, he, yeah. So, so. I mean, it was a, that was a big get. That was a big get to get him in a million dollar film. I mean, uh, Joe. I mean, that was a pretty good get for them to get them in the in the movie. Joe Frazier. We've got Duke, Apollo's trainer. He be, he gets a really prominent role as you go forward. But he's got a great he's got a great line. He doesn't know it's a damn show. He thinks it's a it's, damn fight. That's that's just that's a great line. Well, in, I guess, the, and also he, uh, also the first time you see Duke, he's got his collar open and he's just. Studying, he's studying Rocky hitting this beef. Hitting the, yes, and no. Apollo's, Apollo's in the back, and he's like, you know, Sydney, Sydney, give me some coffee, give me some coffee. Do we have, you know, it's such a great, you know, uh, Duke cream knows. Has, he knows. Cream, he knows. He sees. He knows. He yeah. sees that man. He knows knows. Uh, did I mention Frank Stallone, Sly's brother, in the film, singing "Take You Back" around Sex. the fire can? I mean, that's pretty good. You throw your brother in there. My personal favorite on the scene stealer, Gaza. Oh, go for it, go for it, Rock. I mean, that's who I got. I just love that guy. He's just, he he loves Rock. I mean, look, he he's got him breaking thumbs all around town. But the guy is, well, he's the one guy that believes in Rocky through it all. And, and Gaza will come up too. You know, the, the fact he's got Rocky out there, quote unquote, breaking legs for him and Rocky can't, you know, he's not going to hurt a soul. Gazo's got some judgment issues there, but that's coming up later. I would imagine later in the pause, in the podcast. Um, how about, I, I should have wrote her name down, but how about the girl he takes from the bums around the fire and he gives them, Hey, excuse my language, but a, a whore, you know, I mean, a, a whore and the girl's like, you know, and he's just, he's such a great guy. There's yep. no one in this film. He doesn't want to help. And they all turn on him. Cause as you remember, he drops her off at her, <laughs> he drops her off at her house and he's like, Hey, Rock, <laughs> what, is he, what does she say? Suck it or something like yeah, that? Or flips him off, yeah. Flips yeah. him off, and yeah. So, he, you know, no good deed goes unpunished. So she, I thought she was really good uh, as, as a scene stealer. But I think Gazo is good. 
I think I texted you and literally I had forgot that got I thought I don't think Gaza was in the mob. I think he was just a loan shark. Or is that loan synonymous? Shark. Is that it, synonymous? Are you in the mob if you're a loan shark? We'll have to check with the hots. I'm, I'm not. I'm not positive. Yeah. But let, let's. Just, I think sure. he's a loan shark. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I had forgot that he was. I thought. He, I, I thought he was in the mob. I forgot he wasn't in the mob. So yeah, I'll take Gazo. Gazo's good. I think. I mean, I don't know how you can't give this to Paulie. Paulie's. Paulie's <laughs> like. Paulie's like Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight. I just cannot wait for him to get back on the screen. He is really good. I just think in this, he's just in the, he's just in the movie too. He's too much of a main character, but I, I get you. He's just, he wins every scene, you know? Maybe that's, a, maybe that's a different category. He's All right. amazing. I have been waiting weeks to, to, to unload this, this on you. This, this next category is against the grain. I mean, this is kind of like, Maybe it's a controversial opinion. It's something as you watch the movie, you've just thought about over the years and you just, there's no answer to it. But I, Bob, are we sure Mickey's a good trainer? Are we sure? let, me, let me lay down. Here, here's my case. Number one, he's got the future heavyweight champion of the world in his gym, carrying around a spit bucket and mopping sweat off the floor. No eye for talent. Zero eye for talent. He's got he's got Balboa right there. Wants nothing to do with him until he gets a shot at the title. So no eye for talent. Two, his training methods, Bob. Look, I like chasing the chickens and stuff like that around. But then he comes back and he ties his legs together and has him hit the bag. Does he want him avoiding all these haymakers from Creed or not? I think he's sending mixed messages. Rocky's not really sure what to do. You mentioned it before. He's telling him women weaken leg. Maybe that's true or not, but... Can't you tell that Rocky's North Star is Adrian? I mean, that's kind of what has got him going. He wants to go the distance for her. He's trying to win for her. It kind of gets him going. Mickey does not pick up on it. Yeah, he, This is yeah. a different movie. But in Rocky too, famously, he goes, look, we're not fighting Southpaw. Creed's ready for Southpaw. We're going to fight right-handed, the whole thing. Just gets Rocky absolutely murdered for 14 and a half rounds. How does Rocky knock him out? with a left hook when, the, when they're going. So he totally botches the strategy there. But my biggest beef and my biggest question mark, is Mickey a good trainer? In our favorite scene, the penultimate round, the 14th round, he gets knocked down in his corner. Mickey's yelling, down, down, stay down. Now look, I get he's looking after his guy. He's trying to keep him healthy. But let's say Rocky listens to him and stays down. It's just a knockout in the 14th round. No one cares. He has to go the distance. He has to lose in the split decision. The popular opinion among America is Rocky won the fight. Creed wins a fight, but he knows he didn't beat him, which causes him to do the rematch, leads to Rocky winning, and becomes a heavyweight champion of the world. Mickey, I, I, he's not a good trainer. What to he's you? Got him, he's got him in his gym for six years. Six years he's got him there. And he says, oh, you had the talent. Did, well, do you really think that he had six years he's got him there? I mean, what does a great coach do? Yes, you need to know X's and O's, but a great coach, as we all know, gets the best out of his out of his players. So he's got him there six years. He takes his locker, right? That's he 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 comes up, and and he's not that he's not, I wouldn't call him the most ethical guy because as soon as Rocky gets the shot and he knows he's getting 150 grand, who comes up? Hat in hand, knocking on his door. Oh, Rock, I can train you. I can train you. I can do this. Um, and to your point about staying down, you, this guy's got a shot of a lifetime. There is going, no one could have known. Mickey didn't know there was going to be Rocky 1, 2, 3, 4, Balboa, Creed. He didn't know that. And he's no. going to tell him to stay down? <laughs> I, I can't stand Mick. I, and I, I can't, I can't, I can't stand Mick. And, and. There's no chance that one-armed push-ups are good for anybody. You can't, the, it, the stress on the shoulder of doing a one-armed push-up in that scene is just that there's no way that that's good for anybody. So in answer to your question, or your question was, are we sure he's good? I would disagree with your question because there was, I don't think there was ever a question. He was good manager. It's, so it's not even against the grain. It's just, this it's is just not, popular opinion. It's apparently. not even against the grain. Maybe against the grain is one-arm push-ups are terrible for boxers. Mm. Terrible mm. for boxers. But yeah, Mick, not great. I would say maybe the person who motivated other than Adrian 
the person who motivate him. I mean, I would say Cuff and Link are better trainers than Mick. How about that? How about Cuff against the grain? How about that against the grain? Underrated pets. You, do, you, do you have one? You got anything against the grain here, Rocky? Uh, no, no. I, I think you hit it there. I think the most obvious one is Mick. Um, I think when you bring up Adrian uh, and thoughts about against the grain would be saying Adrian is good for rock. Uh, yeah. This is the only movie. This is the only movie that he is um, against the grain is um, this movie probably shouldn't have even happened. There's no way the Italian stallion <laughs> gets the shot. versus the champ. Um, so, no. I mean, come on. What's that? Yeah, I mean, it's a great story. I mean, the Italian a, stallion shot of a lifetime against Creed. And yeah, no, no, it's, it's a, no, I, I wish I could say there's going to be other movies. There's going to be other movies where we go really against the grain, like against the grain would be saying no four is better than one. That's not the case here. You know, against the grain is, you know, Rocky, you know, technically should have been disqualified in two. He, she used the rope. For, there's, there's just nothing. The, the movie is too good to go against much of the grain on this one. Agreed. All right, one final thing, but we got some end of the uh, movie awards. This is a good one. This will come up a lot. Did this movie need a different ending? I, I say no. I, I think it's perfect because he doesn't win the fight. I, I think it's absolutely perfect. Do you, do you agree? Yeah, no, it's 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 absolutely perfect. It's exactly what the way it should. I kind of like the mayhem at the end, not yeah. knowing... I don't, I still don't know what a split decision means. So like when they say it's been a split decision and people react, I don't even know what that means. I do know that, that Creed, you know, puts his hands up. So I, I'm assuming he wants, I just learned that he won in this podcast. So yeah, that's great. Um, but no, yeah, it was, a, it was a perfect ending. That would be the definition of a bird turd. The fact that you <laughs> yeah. didn't know that Creed exactly. won. All right. This is a fun one. This is the hall of fame plaque category. So think think of this as like you're going into the actor or actress is going into the Hall of Fame. What's what's on the what's on the card, right? I mean, it's kind of like, you know, Joe Montana played for the Chiefs at the end of his career, but when he goes into the Hall of Fame, he's he's a 49er, right? I mean, that's that's what do you know? This is the rare movie, boss, where just about everybody, the exception of one, maybe, is this is probably on their plaque. So obviously Stallone, this is on the plaque. I mean, he he's Rocky, he's almost become Rocky. Apollo, Carl Weathers, I mean, a great turn in Predator. Is he more known for Chubbs now to this generation? Or is he is is Rocky on the plaque? First of all, first of all, he it is amazing how much Carl Weathers looks like the heavyweight champion of the world. <laughs> I mean, the way he glides around, the way he moves, the way he is so, here's against the grain. Um, you know, a, a pop, Carl Weathers was is by far and away a much better boxing actor uh, than than Rocky. That might not be against the grain. He looks awesome, oh, awesome. Just, uh, it's just raw steel. I mean, raw steel, great. but just the way he moves, the way he takes a, a punch, it's very believable. This is by far and away when he goes. It, it, if he went into the Hall of Fame. He, it would be a bust of Apollo Creed in the American flag shorts, which is as iconic as it gets, uh, with the George Washington hair saying, I want you. I want you. I want you. We, should, we uh, should have talked about that. All right. So, yeah, you had, you had me there. Burt Young, Paulie, clearly, guy goes in uh, as that. Burgess Meredith, as a couple, I mean, look, the guy has some good movies. You know, he's the Penguin, notably, in the Batman TV show, Twilight Zone episodes, but he's Mick, right? I mean, Mick. Burgess Meredith. Is Mick. Talia Shire, look, she's also Connie Corleone in The Godfather. I mean, she's the the, da the only daughter of the Don, you know, infamously married to Carlo, who meets an untimely ending. Carlo, uh, bad, bad choice there. Bad, bad choice. He sold out uh, Sonny. What do, what do you got for Talia Shire? Is it is it Rocky or is it Godfather? Well, how, how deep do we want to? How deep do we want to go into this question? Let's um, leave that. But I mean, what what is she going in as? She's going in as Adrian. Maybe She's the Adrian. most icon maybe the most iconic movie wife of all time, for better or worse. I mean, Yo Adrian, I did it. Maybe is is an is is an incredibly iconic movie line on the short. Um, so list. she's got to go in as Adrian. And as you said, we'll do movies where no character in the entire movie 
will be this will be on their Hall of Fame plaque. It's almost it's this almost is the sweep. Yeah, this, this, is the this, this is the rare sweep. How about Philly movies? Just the greatest Philly movie. I'll, I'll give you six cents. Trading places. I think part of that was in was in Philadelphia. Um, the movie Philadelphia. I didn't really care for it. Invincible. Invincible. Another, another under, underdog story. But this has got to be the. I mean, look, there's okay. a statue of Rocky in the city. Right? Well, this, this, is, this, is, this is this is good since I didn't prepare. We didn't we didn't prepare for this question. I didn't prepare for this question. But here's what I'll tell you. What I put in one of my notes is so Philadelphia for me, and this is not a jab at Foreman. It's kind of a forgotten city. I don't. I don't. I've been to Philly once. It, I don't plan on ever going back. That sounds awful. I don't plan on taking my kids there. I don't really feel anything towards Philly. I know there's some history there for sure. That's not me, you know, crapping on the city. This movie made me feel like I wish I was from Philadelphia. I mean, he, he's that good. He's that good. I got, I had to think like, man, if I'm from Philadelphia, this has got to be an awesome, awesome movie to watch. So Philadelphia movies, I've got to say yes. I have to say yes. I mean, this, look, we need to keep, we'll keep records, I guess, uh, of these, but this, I doubt there's another movie that gets the full sweep uh, of just the Hall of Fame plaque. Speaks to why it's number three on the all-time list. Yeah. Last category, MVP of the movie. I mean, Stallone, uh, it got wrote it for crying out loud. Forced yeah, himself to be the main character. It's, 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 there, there's no, not even a second place, is there? It no, not even a second place, and I tell way better acting than I remember. Like he is very believable, um, very believable as this upstart guy who feels he never gets a break. Um, yeah, maybe that that's 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 now that I'm doing this and this you know this is off the cuff here against the grain. Um, you know, Rocky, can we get a little bit more positive thoughts about yourself? I mean. You think it's this pull yourself up from the bootstraps. This guy constantly is putting obstacles in his in his way and not believing him in himself. Um, but yeah, it's uh he's he's as good as it he's as good as it gets. Great acting. You believe it, you want it. And again, it's a story with a main protagonist that you just can't what you just cannot wait to see him succeed, which is rare nowadays. For sure, for sure. Well look, we we've spent almost an hour talking about Rocky. We love yep. it. We, we have it ranked three on the all-time list. But with all that being said, Boz, is this movie better than Man on Fire? Why or why not? Well, no, it's not even close to being better than Man on Fire. I, I don't know. I mean, I, listen, here's what, I, here's what I know about Man on Fire is that when you talk about a movie the way we're talking about these movies and trying to rank them is that if 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 Rocky's on one TV and Man on Fire uh, is on the other, I'm watching Man on Fire every single time. Um, so all of the things I've said for the last 57 minutes and 46 seconds, um, they're all pretty much moot because if Man on Fire is, I'm not even watching this. Now, you might think, well, that means if Rocky's three, Man on Fire is one or two in my list. It's not. It's not. I don't even know if it's in my top 50, but I'm telling you right now. Is this movie better than Man on Fire? Not even close. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic! It's fantastic. Great, a great take. Look, this has been this has been fun, Boz. I mean, we've gosh, we've talked about this for years. We have our first Poskers episode in the can. Can't in wait to can. get it to the group. We're going to be doing this. We've got a lot of movies. And look, if you hear this and you're like, "Hey, I, I, my favorite movie is X," let us know. Maybe you get an invite. You want to participate on this. Talk about your favorite movie. I mean, look, there's a good chance we're going to do a poker movie with a crazy Russian in it. Got to think some hots are going to, you know, be on that. I mean, Tom does a great, uh, what's the guy's name? The Malkovich character. I mean, he does a great one there. Look, any KGB on it? send us a text, you know, let it, let what, us know. Is there anybody on the text that would maybe have a, a, a bleeding heart for a Cuban, a Cuban refugee who finds his way through the world scratching and clawing whenever he can maybe he avoids a chainsaw and a shower one time and just finishes on top of the world anybody you know that could like to be on that podcast oh i've got i've got, got a guy okay. got a painting okay. empire down in naples we'll make sure that we we, we get him we get him on there that oh, movie that's a, empire. that's a tease that's, that's a, tease. a tease well hey the poskers Look forward to another podcast coming up. Uh, we were trying to get one in here before the uh, the championship games. 
get going. We want to hear what Bean has to say about that. But hey, it's been enjoyable. Enjoy did anybody come in the gym? One woman did. Uh, she's confused as all hell. Um, she kind of right looked around. around. So you'll, it was maybe like 15 minutes ago. You'll see me look up this way a couple times, but we just, you know, it's fine. <laughs> Worked out perfect. <laughs> That's terrific. All right. Enjoy Tennessee Tech tonight. Good luck to that. I don't even know what they are. Have a good they, one. Yeah, they're uh, Tennessee Tech versus Arkansas Little Rock. I'm sure Bean has some unit on that game. I'm sure he's got a beat on on whatever, but we'll let you know how it is. Good being with you, brother. This has been fun. Take care. Yeah, man.